So another round of applause to the choir. Minister, Acting Premier, they kept us entertained from about half past nine, and thanks uh, for this wonderful music that we got from the choir. I introduce myself to the rest of the uh, people here, that I'm the Program Director, Film Joachim from the DST, and we are here in Pumalanga to celebrate or to launch the National Science Week. The National Science Week is celebrated uh, every year in South Africa and we rotate from different provinces and you'll hear perhaps more about this from the Minister. So this year we are here in Pumalanga at the launch of the week. Uh, here we expect about 3,000 people, 2,000 learners and about 1,000 members of the general public. And of course you know why we want uh, a society that understands that uh, the, the future is about science, technology, and innovation. So this launch and this celebration is recognizing, therefore, that we need youngsters who will participate in subjects that will take them into those areas of science and technology that the society needs. But also we need a, a society that appreciates science and technology. And this event, Minister, could not come at a better time than after last night, and I'm sure most of us were glued uh, to our television watching uh, the lunar eclipse, uh, which we were told uh, was the first one that lasted for about four hours, and the next one is expected around about 2023. I had a story in the morning, Minister, as I conclude my remarks, that uh, one of the kings uh, who was uh, living in South Africa a very, very strong king. One day, the soldiers of the king found that the other eclipse, not the lunar eclipse, the solar eclipse, which could happen during the day and the sun disappears for a couple of hours. So this happened when this king was ruling and some of the soldiers found themselves in a situation when it was dark uh, during the day and they did not know what to do because they had to go to war. So they went to the king and asked the king if he could do something about this problem because it was dark during the day. So the king uh, did not know what to do and then he commanded the sun to come out. And because it was a short eclipse, the sun came out and they believed that this was because of the king who are strong. So we want as the society to know that it's not always the kings that uh, will command the sun, but these are phenomena that can be explained by science. So I'd then like to kickstart the program by inviting uh, the Vice Chancellor of the University of Mpumalanga, uh, Professor Maegiso, uh, to give concluding remarks because we cannot be comfortable and then after that we'd acknowledge the guests that we have uh, today. A round of applause for the Vice Chancellor. Sani Bonani, Tumelang, Aushen, Loshani, Dimasheroni, Molweni. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Minister of Science and Technology, Honorable Ms. Kubai Ngubane. Act, sorry. <laughs> Deputy Minister of Science and Technology, Honorable Ms. Kamakwaza Msibi. Acting Premier of the Province of Mbumalanga, Honorable uh, Malaza, uh, the Director General from Science and Technology, Dr. Phil Mjoaha, uh, members of the Executive Management of DST and its entities, the DDG for Education in Bumalanga, Senior Leadership of the Bumalanga Department of Education, 
Senior Leadership of the Department of Science and Technology, uh, members of the management of the University of Mpumalanga, as well as the academic leadership of the institution. We have international visitors from Botswana, uh, from uh, Kenya, who are part of the exhibitors, as well as Namibia. Uh, our Student Representative Council, the staff of the University of Mpumalanga, learners, students, educators, parents, the exhibitors of course, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen. It is a great honor and a privilege for me to welcome all of you to the University of Mbomalanga and in particular to the launch of the National Science Week with the theme, Deepening Our Democracy Through Science. To those of you coming from outside the province of Mbumalanga, welcome to Mpumalanga, the place of the rising sun. The rays of the sun are a powerful symbol for the university, representing life, warmth, and energy. The warmth is not only of the province, but of the people generally. As the University of Mbumalanga, we love our location and would not want to exchange it for anything. UNESCO has recently proclaimed the, the Makonjwa Mountains in Babaton as a World Heritage Site. This is the 10th World Heritage Site for South Africa and now makes us the leaders on the African continent, ahead of Egypt with nine sites. This site is of global importance because of its geological importance concerning the formation of the Earth. It is uh, extraordinary because it contains fossils of the earliest form of life on Earth and the site is accessible to the public on the geo trail. This will be an excellent site for the training of geologists at the University of Mbumalanga with the view of expanding the pool of scientists. We will introduce a geology major as from 2019. The university has received accreditation from the Council on Higher Education to offer a general BSc degree in 2019. This is in addition to other qualifications we are already offering in the broad domain of science and technology. We pride ourselves of the state-of-the-art facilities in which we train and educate our students. The science building is just one example of the iconic buildings on campus. Our vision as the University of Mpumalanga is to be an African university leading in creating opportunities for sustainable development through innovation. This vision has resonance with the vision of the Department of Science and Technology, which deals with increased well-being and prosperity through science, technology, and innovation. We are a values-driven institution, and we are guided in our ventures by the following values. Excellence, integrity, diversity, collaboration, adaptability, relevance, and inspiration. At a strategic level and in line with UMP's vision, our goal is to make a pioneering, critical, and constructive contribution through the production of knowledge and dissemination 
to tackling the deep-seated problems of growing social inequality and economic exclusion in South Africa and the continent of Africa. We are committed to using the university's knowledge assets to actively and creatively promote a vibrant economic, social and political democracy in which all sections of society, particularly the poor, can find a meaning place in society. We strongly believe that knowledge and skills are key assets to enable effective advancement and deepening of the quality and scope of democratic life in the world. We are committed to the development of an innovative culture and to playing a catalytic role for innovation in industry and for the society at large with a definite bias towards Africa. As the University of Mpumalanga and as part of our pioneering journey, we are deeply committed to make a meaningful contribution to the sustainability of our province, our country, the region, the continent, and beyond. The National Science Week, therefore, has a major role to play in shining light on science and technology and making learners, students, and the public as a whole aware of the career opportunities in science and technology. We, as the University of Mbumalanga, are excited to be part of such a project. The launching taking place at our campus makes it even more pleasing, especially since 2018, October, will be marking the five years of the existence of this great institution. It should therefore serve as an inspiration to many students and this region to truly aspire to follow careers in science and technology. We know that science and technology are indispensable in the development and economic advancement of nations. These days, we talk of the fourth industrial revolution and artificial intelligence. For our students, learners and staff, to be part of this fast-paced and rapidly changing world, they would need to embrace science and technology. With those words, you are all welcome to the University of Mbumala. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Vice Chancellor Professor Maegiso. Just to remind us about how this university positioned itself to use knowledge to advance the region here in Pumalanga and South Africa and the rest of the continent. And the fact that, yes, indeed, you are a young university. We get the message, a minister, she keeps reminding us she is running a young institution that needs support from us. So we, we've had this message. It has come in subtle uh, 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 comments that you've made, so we've had you. So you've already helped in uh, the acknowledgments uh, that we wanted to do of the minister, Honorable Kubain Gubane, is with us this morning. Our deputy minister, Kamakwazam Sibi, we are grateful they are here. The acting premier, MEC, uh, Mr. Malaza, taking time off to be with us this morning. And then, of course, yourself, uh, vice chancellor, and the rest of your team and members of uh, executive management of the university. I'd also like to acknowledge the presence of the managing director of SASTA, Dr. Chabu Mkeri, from the NRF, the TDG Education of Pumalanga, uh, Ms. Moyane, and then all of the DST uh, DDGs, uh, as well as the other team from the DST, I've seen them. 
the MD of Earth Observation from the Space Agency, uh, Ms. Andy Swamlisa. Later, she will hand over satellite imagery uh, to the acting premier. And then, again, this event is never uh, completed unless we have exhibitors. And again, we are grateful this year that uh, not only do we have exhibitors from South Africa, but from Kenya, Namibia, and Botswana. And the journalists, we are forever grateful for your presence and in taking the message of what we do in this sector to the rest of the society. And then, of course, the most important people today are the learners as well as educators, so we acknowledge them as well. So in order to move the program forward, uh, I will uh, humbly request the acting premier of Mpumalanga, uh, Mr. Malaza, to give the remarks. A round of applause for the acting premier, please. Program Director, Minister of Science and Technology, Ms. M. Kubai Ngubane, the Deputy Minister, Kamakwaza Msibi, Vice Chancellor of the University of Mpumala, Professor Mayegisu, the leadership of the University, Head School of Biology and Environmental Science, University of Mpumala, Professor Daniel Parker, MD of Earth of Observation, South Africa National Space Agency, Ms. Andy Swamlisa, senior managers of different departments present, principal present, parents, president and members of student representative council, former learners represented by Fiona Koza, the delegation from business community, the Marimba Band, representative from media, learners, ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning. Indeed, it is my great privilege to participate in this important occasion for the launch of the National Science Week for 2018. This year marks the 18th year of this initiative since its original launch in the year 2000. All these years, the country, through the Department of Science and Technology, mobilized society, businesses, students, and academia to realize and embrace the importance of science and technology. Indeed, we are meeting at the backdrop of an amazing lunar eclipse that occurred last night, which provided us with the experience of a lifetime. We are delighted and privileged that it occurred on the eve of this important launch so as to provide practical reasons on why science and technology must continue, must constitute a cornerstone of everything that we do or say. When developments of the Easter night are explained, they say a lunar eclipse occur when the moon passes directly behind the earth and into its shadow. This occurs only when the sun, earth, and the moon are aligned, exactly or very closely so with the planet in between. Surely, program director, one requires basic science and technology to comprehend this. It therefore concludes that science and technology exist to expand our knowledge about human origin, evolution space in which we reside in, what's around us and our space. Program director, the geo development of science and technology has demanded humanity to adapt towards the fourth industrial revolution which dictates the transformation of traditional model of governance and doing business. Humanity is current facing a climate change challenges which can be attributed to the snail pace in embracing science and technology. We are convinced that, in more, we are convinced that if more was done on promotion of sustainable development guided by science and technology, a lot more on green reduction could have been avoided. Some of the challenges on drought, which we experienced in recent time, requires that we meaningfully invest more resources in science and technology. Leading economics in the world manage their growth and development by investing meaningfully in science and technology. 
We say this because lesser societal interest and cost containment on investment in science and technology limits growth of nations. When His Excellency, former President of the Republic, President Tabompeg, spoke about the importance of science and technology in 1998, this is what he said, and I open quote, during the year of science and technology, as we draw attention of the public to the central science, engineering, and technology, we must, in particular, capture the imagination of our youth, our future sciences, close quote. The key message to be put across this year and beyond must be that science, engineering, and technology are important for sustainability and for moving our province, our country, our continent forward. Minister, we share a view that the best gift we can provide to the future and the generation of the student we are here today is to invest on science and technology. The province of Mpumalanga has established Maths and Science and Technology Academy, MSTA, which caters for 101 secondary schools and 492 primary schools. In this 101 secondary school, it is compulsory for all learners to take mathematics, science and technology subjects. The teachers of, of these schools are fully supported by the academy. The learners in this 101 secondary school will be writing grade 12 for the first time this year. This will provide us an opportunity to evaluate the impact of these initiatives in areas that require improvement. We hope you won't mind, Minister, when we knock at your door to seek collaboration of purpose in order to strengthen this noble initiative. I also use this platform to invite you to the OR Tambo Mathematics, Science and Technology Academy so that you could see the kind of infrastructure and the program that is taking place there. And I'm certain that you, you will respond very soon and visit that uh, uh, academy. The department is making every effort to introduce e-learning and we look at the decision that will start this in the boarding school and the MSTA schools. We understand that the introduction of this kind of technology requires highly improved infrastructure. And it is our considered view that a strong and strategic partnership with the University of Mpumalanga is quite important. So we are prepared to be working closely with the university management and leadership in order to intensify some of the programs that, were already, that they are already in place. We salute the work which the Department of Science and Technology has carried through. Since the first launch, Science Week, some, some two decades ago, it is very important that initiative, which has a great bearing on day-to-day -day lives of our people. We, we need to carry our people through the journey of science and technology. The youth of the first world countries and some of the emerging economies, like our peer and partners in BRICS, have moved a step ahead. Ours is to emulate and move with greater speed. Minister and Vice-Chancellor, few years ago, China was behind in a number of areas. However, since they deliberate, deliberate invest, invest in science, a great deal has been achieved. Three or four decades ago, China and South Korea were nowhere to be found in the space of car manufacturing and development of electronic gadgets. But, but as we speak today, those two economics are leaders of technological trends. All this achievement we sing of them today is in the name of investment in science. Yes, we can make something of ourselves as well, only if we can review our attitudes in relation towards how we view science and technology. I hope we can move much further from where we are if we can remember some of the great work we did in the past, like the first heart transplant which was carried in the world, the generation of oil and related products and electricity through coal. It's among initiatives we can be proud of ourselves with. We can proud ourselves with. 
all this past initiative can be used as a platform within which we can build some of the new scientists, experience and technologies. The establishment of the university will serve as a formidable vehicle for the development and exploration of new scientists' discoveries in the province. Program Director, as I conclude, I do so with great optimism and appreciation of this initiative, and I can visualize a better tomorrow for all our people. Pumalanga province, with its scientific beauty and the potential to contribute more ways than one in the field of science and technology. The province harbors the Sudwala Caves, God's Window, the Three Rondavels, the mining industry, and just this month, the Makonjwa Mountains were declared as the, as the World Heritage Site. It is only science that can explain how it existed. We therefore feel greatly honored by the department for deciding to launch this program in the place of the, ridings, of, of the rising sun, and indeed will support this National Science Week as Mpumalanga province. We have lined up a number of activities across the length and breadth of the province to expose our learners to communities, to the beauty and the capabilities of science and technology. And indeed, Minister, we are humble with your presence. And from now onwards, we will ensure that we walk with our heads held up high in ensuring that science, science and technology is appreciated by all our communities. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, the Acting Premier. I'm sure Mpumalanga feels very proud to have a leadership with such a vision on science, technology, and innovation, and how they see the role of science and technology playing a role in transforming the society. And then, of course, uh, we hear the second message from the Acting Premier about the partnership with yourselves. And I'm almost certain that the minister would agree with me that we would go back and think about how we actually make it practical, uh, working, of course, with the university as we, as we proceed. So it is now my honor and my pleasure to introduce uh, Minister Mamulogo Kupai Ngubane, who is currently the Minister of Science and Technology and a member of the National Executive Committee of the African National Congress, the ANC. Before this uh, portfolio, she formerly served as the Minister of Energy uh, before she was redeployed to be the Minister of Communications. She is a former SASCO and ANC Youth League leader in Gauteng. She started a career as a community developer in non-governmental organizations. She subsequently joined the banking sector as a skills development specialist. She then became a skills development manager at the National Health Laboratory Services, NHLS, when she joined the public sector, she became a director in the office of the president of South Africa and later served as a parliamentary advisor to the then deputy president of South Africa, Mr. Halim Mutlante. She then became a parliamentarian and prior to her appointment to a ministerial pos position, she served as a chairperson of the portfolio committee on telecommunications and postal services. She holds a Bachelor of Arts degree from Vista University and a Master's degree in Management in Public and Development Management from the University of the Witwatersrand. So a round of applause uh, for the Minister of Science and Technology. Thank you very much, Director General, um, who is our program director today, Dr. Phil Mjuahe. Um, greetings to the Deputy Minister of Department of Science and Technology, Mamuka Makwaza Msibi, the Acting Premier and MEC for Education, Mr. Spusiso Malaza, the Vice-Chancellor of the University of Mpumalanga, Prof. Maikiso, Executive Management of the University of Mpumalanga, DDG for Education in Mpumalanga, Ms. Lucy Moyani, MD of SASTA, Dr. Jabu Nukeri, MD of Earth Observation Sansa, Ms. Andy Swam Lisa, Lisa, yeah. 
We've got our DDGs here, DDG Mboneni Mwofe, DDG Tutuit, DDG Mukwena, and DDG Makode, who are here. The advisor of the minister, Dr. Lufuno Marwala. Um, guests from Kenya, Namibia, and Botswana, I saw the exhibitions there, our exhibitors. Learners, who are the most important guests here, my VIPs. Students who are here from the university, educators, members of the media, I hope I've been able to acknowledge everybody, ladies and gentlemen. I think let me especially acknowledge and appreciate the support and the partnership we do, especially with institutions from Namibia, Kenya, and Botswana to support us uh, here today. And let me thank as well the parents and teachers for ensuring that you bring our learners here to participate. And thank you to the university for agreeing to host us for the national launch. Uh, let me start this way. Can I see from the learners who have participated in National Science Week before? Anyone? You are coming, all coming for the first time. Are you still here? Okay, let's start. Those who are coming for the first time to National Science Week, raise your hands. So all of us, good. Do you know what we are expecting? No. So the teacher said to you, we are going to National Science Week. And like good learners, you came through again. So you arrived. What, you know what you are expecting, what you are looking for. You just know it's science and technology. Hmm? Okay, so we are about to travel with you to Mass. Are you ready? Yes. You are ready? Yes. We are not coming back. <laughs> eh? You are not coming back. Are you ready to travel to Mass? Yes. As long as you come back. Yes. Okay. <laughs> no, uh, now I understand. Because that's what I wanted to check. If you are ready to travel, if you know what you are here. Let me try and help you and assist you so that you can understand why we had to call you on a Saturday and disturb your nice time resting again. Because you go to school Monday to Friday and you don't want to see school on fr Saturday and Sunday, ne? Yes. That's a bad thing though. Is that it bad? Is school that bad? Ah, uh, it can't be that bad. How many of you are in grade 12? Anyone in grade 12? I met somebody during when, oh yeah, there. Because I was surprised there's somebody I met who is in grade 12. Those of you who are in grade 12, Saturday, Sunday, every hour counts. You'll see your resting in December after writing the final exam. Let me start by saying, because that's why I wanted to check how many of us know why we are here. Uh, and what is it that we want to do today and the whole week from next week? We are obviously launching the National Science Week as the Department of Science and Technology. Uh, this is a program we've been doing. It's led by SANSTA on our behalf. SANSTA falls under the National Research Foundation, which is an entity of the Department of Science and Technology. Now, first, we said we wanted to bring you together here so that you can meet with us, you can talk to us, but also be exposed to the careers that are there in the field of science and technology. So that you can know the opportunities. You had the DG of Department of Science and Technology together with the, premier, with the acting premier, talking about the lunar eclipse. How many of us watched it yesterday? Ah, so many didn't watch, eh? You missed out. What was happening is that as you normally see the moon, it eventually longest, about four hours, it changed to a color almost red. So during that period, it was when the moon was passing the earth. That's part of science. So that one you can watch with your eyes. The others watch what the activities of the moon and the sun and the stars, 
That's astronomy they watch with the telescopes. So yesterday, all of us didn't need telescopes we could watch. That's why I wanted to see how many. Those of us who missed out, it's unfortunate. You should have watched so that you can start knowing some of these things. But I always say, many people make it sound so difficult for science because they tell us science is very complicated, isn't it? And it's not compli complicated. If you listen to many people, even simple things in what happens in the kitchen of our mothers is science. That's where science happens, isn't it? When we burn the eggs, we can't switch on the stove properly because it's electricity. Engineers know how it, that's where it starts. You need to start being inquisitive to ask, how does electricity, when I switch on, on the light, and then that uh, fire goes until we can boil water? It starts from being inquisitive to that level. Now, we're saying we're celebrating this year as the year of Mama Sisulu and Dada Madiba, but our theme is more anchored around Mama Sisulu. And the reason why we did that was precisely because we want to make sure that all of us remain and understand why these leaders fought for us and why they believed that freedom was important, but not only freedom, but for us to be able to ensure that we entrench our work in the communities. Mama Sisulu was a community development worker, was a nurse, and understood that it is important when we do our work, we do our work within communities. And, but more importantly, we ensure that we uplift our communities. That's the major reason why, as Department of Science and Technology, we decided on this thing. And because the majority of the people think that science and technology or science, it's a very complicated thing, that must happen there, it's too much sophisticated, doesn't happen in our communities. That's why we are bringing personalities or leaders or former people who have passed on or people who are currently playing a role within the communities and linking them in communities because science is about what we do in the Department of Science and Technology. We also help in find solutions to our ordinary problems. We find solution into energy, how best we can use technology to provide electricity. We find solutions to health problems. How do we utilize technology to make sure that we solve the challenges of health problems, such as either illnesses or even just to make sure that we run an effective health sector. So we say that because we want you to understand science and technology, it's about your day-to-day -day life. It affects you every day. It happens around you every day. Did we know that? We did, ne? And another issue around science and technology and the reason why we are doing this. We're launching today, but the National Science Week is running throughout the week. So when it's running throughout the week, part of the issue is that we want you to be exposed to the careers. Today you've been walking around the stalls. Some of you are still going to the stalls. They are going to show you some of the work even around how uh, self-driving cars work. Ne? One of the stalls has how a self-driving car works. Some of the stores are going to talk to you about the space activities. Some of them are going to talk about how can we be able to utilize artificial intelligence to be able to uh, play a role in reviving industries. Others are going to talk to you about beneficiation, how we can be able to take waste and produce products. One of the things that we have done as the Department of Science and Technology, for example, we have a biorefinery. In the biorefinery, some of you are at home, you eat chicken every day again. Those chicken feathers, do you know that they produce a shampoo to wash your hair? Yes, they do. So part of the work there is that we take chicken feathers as part of biorefinery 
they are within a center, then the technician, the scientists are able to produce oils out of there, they sift them out of technology, then they produce oils, that they can be able to produce a shampoo. They are able to produce it. Those of us who have children in our homes, uh, they produce nappies. Those are some of the things. That wood that is lost in the street, that is thrown away, we take it as well, we produce those products. That is what science is about. These are some of the careers that exist within the science field. Hence, we brought you here because we want to expose you to some of these things. And when we take feathers and produce shampoo, that we call beneficiation. Because we are taking industries that are dying, we are reviving them. In that way, we are providing solutions to dying industry where our mothers will lose jobs, then we are making sure that they remain in the jobs. Ne? So we are here because we want you to also help us in the future, because you are the future scientists, you are the future researchers, so that you can provide us with these solutions going forward. Ne? We are expecting you, when you come out of here, to be able to interest to say, how do I develop a satellite that you become an engineer that develops a satellite that can go to Mars and help us. For example, we were sending off Z-Cube 2, a satellite that is able to help us monitor traffic in the ocean. That satellite as well is able to say to us, when felt fire starts, send us a signal quickly so that the disaster management can run onto the field and go and stop fires. That's why we are saying science and technology, it's about solving challenges in our communities. So those are some of the things that exist. I want to talk to you about those things because I want you to understand, when you do math and science, it doesn't end with you being a doctor only. Some of us, when we grew up, we were told when you do medicine science, because it was a profession that was only known, you can be a doctor. Then it grew a bit, became engineers. But you need to understand, engineering is very broad. Ne? There are various engineers in terms of engineers around space, engineers around uh, your electric, electrical engineers. But today, because we have what we call the fourth industrial revolution. How many of us know about the fourth industrial revolution? We don't. Some of us, again, we have phones. You see, our phones have social media, have internet, ne? and we are wasting data on showing how we are dressed. So we are going from today, ne? stop tweeting and going to Facebook to showcase how we, what we are eating, how we are dressed, but we are going to use that limited data to Google about the fourth industrial revolution because it's important for you as learners to understand what the fourth industrial revolution is about. These are the future jobs. And I'm saying this so that when you choose careers, you understand the impact of those careers that you are choosing going forward. Majority of the workforce or the jobs that exist today, in 2020, some of you, you can count how many years you'll be, in 2020, some of those jobs will start not existing. So the, the important thing is for you to prepare for yourself for the future. Because these are the careers that are going to exist in going forward. One of the things that is important as learners, when you come to these platforms, have a pen and a paper or take out your phone and start noting down the things that are important. Because you are not going to remember some of the things I've said, ne? or what everybody else has said. As you visit the stalls, as they explain to you, write down. Because out of doing that, you are going to remember these things. They are going to help you, those who are not yet in grade 12, to choose the careers that are going to help you tomorrow. I get Ne? Now, I spoke about the fourth industrial revolution. 
First industrial revolution. It's about what we call artificial intelligence. These are robots. Today, those robots are able to become chefs. They cook. You program it and then it cooks. Those robots are able to build houses and infrastructure like this. So you guys are not yet working, so you shouldn't worry about the future work or that people are losing jobs. What you must worry about as learners is to say, how do I play a role in the fourth industrial revolution? How do I get to do a career that can be able to provide solutions for South Africa? Now, some of the things that we talk about in the fourth industrial revolution, I want you to note down, it's 3D printing. What we do in the Department of Science and Technology under CSIR or what we have done, you would listen as you grow up or you'll hear some of the parents, maybe the fingers has been damaged out of maybe accident or something happened. And you find that when they go to do fingerprints either at home affairs at the banks, then those machines cannot recognize their fingerprints. We have developed a technology at CSIR that is able to go deeper beyond the surface and be able to pull the fingerprint. That's part of the work that is being done for the fourth industrial revolution. So some of these things exist, they are there. Then as I talked about robots, we have not scaled much as South Africa. We don't have the robots now. So we need people who are going to build these robots. Ne? So these are the things that exist. These self-driving cars, many of you who come from families or if you Google, the, the mechanic who was yesterday, I get the old mechanic, engineer, used to carry a toolbox. Ne? Today, mechanic has a sort of, no longer carries a toolbox. They go with a computer, they plug it to the car, and then the computer tells them where the problem is on the car. So it tells you that we are moving. Though some of the carriers will remain, but the nature of those careers will change. So as you get interested in what you want to study and what you want to do, you need to understand how it's evolving, that career. But it starts with you getting more information, making sure that you understand your interest, but equally researching more, finding time to take those phones or what our mothers in home bring and ask to Google about these things. And not waste the limited data that we have on social media. If you go to social media, go click and check for Department of Science and Technology. Under Department of Science and Technology on social media, you'll find various things there that talks about various programs that we have that talks about various activities that we are doing. Now, most of you will be going, and I want to see all of you going to school, ne? making sure that you get your metric. Because education is a sustainable tool for development. Those of us who come from poor backgrounds, you would understand that for us to be change agents in our families so that Poverty can go in our families. We have to become those change agents and come and help our families. So the only way that is sustainable for us to do that is through education. Now, I don't miss an opportunity to speak about some of these things when I see young people because there are challenges that we have and I'm going to come to those ones. But one of the things that I want to ask you, how many of us listen to our radios and to our TV? We watch TVs. We watch TV, all of us, ne? Did we see that South Africa was hosting BRICS? Did we see that? And did you notice that the theme of BRICS was around the fourth industrial revolution? Science, technology, and innovation. So this means this is the future. 
There are opportunities that are very excellent, that are great, that are coming up. And I've listened to the Vice Chancellor, I've listened to the MEC of Education. We are going to look at how best we can support both the university and the province, either through our research chairs or either through our center of excellence, because we are talking with the Vice Chancellor that we do not have those here. And there are many areas because science and technology, we research about agriculture, we research about biodiversity. So there are many things that you can do. So we'll see which are the focus areas that we can bring based on the environment and what the strength of the province is about and support so that you also as learners can benefit from the university. But I don't want to take much as well while I come to the end, part of the issue that I always emphasize to young people, we as government, as parents, as educators, we can do our bit. We can provide information for you. We can provide opportunities for you. Today, when you go to university, government says, when you do junior degrees, we will support you. So you get it through NSFAS. When you go beyond, we provide that support. As the Department of Science and Technology currently, we are providing support through funding for learners, for students who are doing masters and PhDs. We are seeing your 25 year olds, your 24 year olds becoming doctors. Doctor is in space, doctor in astronomy and various areas. So we want to see you achieving. There is no excuse because the support is there. So when you do your grade 12, you apply to university, you get your junior degree. After your junior degree, the Department of Science and Technology will open up for application, you apply. But remember, you have to perform. We deal with issues of performance. I get even when you do your metric, because I always say there is no excuse for you not to get the best results. Because all you do is study. Most of us work and study, ne? You only study. So many of us are still studying, including myself. I do all the work during the day and evening. I must catch up with my assignment and email my assignments. What you do is that you study during the day, you do everything, then you go and sleep at night. So there is no excuse for you not to produce A's and B's, guys. If there is nothing like being intelligent, it's about hard work. I always say to others, let us not, while we believe in prayer, but prayer is not going to give you results. It's hard work that is going to give you results. You will get the symbols that you want when you work hard. Now, the challenge we have in our communities with young people, that's why today we worry about the future of South Africa because many of our young people abuse alcohol. It's a problem. And let me share this. Remember, we're talking about research and development. Researchers are saying a brain of an individual becomes fully developed at the age of 21. Do you know that? Your brain is still growing. I agree you are not at 21. Now, when you go and take alcohol and you take drugs, you are stopping the growth of your brain. I'm sharing this so that you can understand the impact of drugs and alcohol. Because some people think that I can do, I can take alcohol just a bit because we think that having fun as young people is about having alcohol. Then you stop the growth of your brain. Then you wonder later in life why some people, when we look at them, we ask, but why this person thinks like a young person when they are adults? It's because at a certain point, 
they stopped the growth of their brains. So you need to protect yourself and allow your bodies and your brains to grow to the fullest. Then it's then that you can start doing other things. Say as one. Yes. The other issue as young people, for you to achieve and be successful, it's about discipline. How you conduct yourself will be and reflect how people treat you. It starts, you don't have to have thin, fancy things, you don't have to have expensive things, it starts with being clean. That's where we see discipline. Looking after yourself, how you project yourself. These are the basic things for success as a human being. We all come from there. Where you respect your teachers, where you become disciplined, because that is going to reflect even when you are an adult. Any career that you are going to do, if you are not self-disciplined, I can tell you, you will never achieve anything. You will never be successful. Because when you move from high school and you go to university, no one is going to follow you whether you attend class. It is through self-discipline that you must know that my class starts at nine, it ends at half past nine, I must be in another one. It is through self-discipline that you're going to have to remember that I have an assignment with a deadline, I must submit. Now you have teachers who are going to sit behind you to chase you in high school, who are going to make sure that you write your test in university. Whether you arrive in class or not, no one cares. It's your future. Now, if you are not disciplined enough, you will drop out. We see many of our young people, they go, they start partying, forgetting why they are in universities. Then they end up dropping out. And you become part of the statistics of unemployed youth. But the painful part is that when that happens to you, you are going to be washing the BMWs and the Mercedes of your, your peers because you'll have to find some mechanism of having an income to eat. So part of the responsibility we have is to be able to build our future. Your mother can't do it, your father can't do it, your teacher can't do it, government can't, it's in your hands. Whether you want to achieve or not is in your hands. It doesn't matter where you come from. Whether you come from a shack, whether you come from a mud house, whether you come from an RDP, whether you come from a mansion, what you can be able to make out of your life, it's you as a person that takes that decision that I'm going to make use of the opportunities that I have to become a better person. So all of us here today have been, having, have been given this opportunity today to be exposed to the careers that can be able to secure our future, that can be able to guarantee us to becoming better people in our society, either as ministers of science and technology tomorrow, either as, as director generals of science and technology, or advisors, or either as those scientists that we celebrate. Today we're celebrating the scientists in SKA of the work the world is talking about them because they have taken a decision to become the best in society. Now, as we launch, we want you to enjoy, have fun while you learn, and take notes of some of these things, ask questions where you do not understand, so that you can learn better, so that when the week ends, you go back to your schools, you would have learned something valuable out of the week that you are participating. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, Minister, uh, for the message of reminding us that science is about understanding how the world works, but also use that knowledge to solve the problems of the society. 
and that we can't do that unless the young folks around the table start to think about their role uh, in these new fields. And also the message of inspiration to the young people as well as the teachers and the society as a whole. Thank you very much. We will now have a, a presentation by XCOM Expo for Young Scientists winner, Ms. Fiona Koza, who is a former grade 12 learner from Maushe Agricultural High School. A round of applause for Ms. Koza. Thank you, Program Director, um, Honorable Minister for the Department of Science and Technology, Ms. Gupai Ngubane, MEC of Education in Pumalanga, and Acting Premier of Mpumalanga Province, Mr. Malaza, Vice Chancellor of the University of Mpumalanga, Ms. Uh, Professor Mayegiso. Head of School of Biology and Environmental Science at the University of Mpumalanga, Professor Parker. Ladies and gentlemen, fellow students, all protocols observed. I feel honored to do a presentation before you on behalf of the work I've done at the Expo and also on behalf of ESCOM Expo for the Young Scientist Participants in Pumalanga and South Africa at large. I'm Fiona Koza, and I'm 17 years old. I'm from a family of five, and of which is um, me, my aunt, my little sister, my mother, and my grandmother, of which are supporting me here today. I come from a region, um, from a, I come from a, Nkomazi district. As you can see um, on the map, there's Bush Pakrish, city of Mbombela, Tabachewu, and Nkomazi. I come from Mangweni, which lies between the border of Komatipot and Swaziland. You can't see it there on the map because it's not present, as you guys can see. And now, I'm going to talk about my journey with the ESCOM Expo for Young Scientists. It all began in 2011 when I was doing grade six and I was introduced by my primary school teacher, Ms. Elke Machele. First time, my project was producing floor polish out of candles because it, is it was affordable by then. And I got my first medal, which was bronze at the regionals. Proceeding to grade seven in 2012, my project was titled um, Producing Cooking Oil Out of Coconuts, which um, aimed to solve the problem of people suffering from high cholesterol levels. And I, called, and I got gold at sub-regional level. And in 2013 and 2014, I was introduced in the world of debate at Maushi Agricultural High School. Then proceeding to, to grade 10, in 2015, I got bronze medal at sub-regional and silver at regional because my project was a good project in terms of energy solving. Um, I did that project because by that particular time we had problems with energy. So my project was aimed at producing electricity out of soil microbes. And then in, uh, in grade 11, 2016, my project got gold at sub-regional and gold at regional and then a highly commended certificate at, at the International Science Fair. It was titled, Let's Recycle Them Out of Plastics, which was aimed at recycling um, plastics to produce light crude oil for generators. And then in 2017, I was doing grade 12. And at sub-regional, I got gold, and then I got both silver, and, uh, and then I got silver in both the regional and in the international science film. For last year, I identified a problem that we have, um, we do have solar panels, 
but they don't track the sun. So I introduced a system which helps solar panels to track along the sun's movement, which means that they can be able to harness double the power. Because normally when solar panels are fixed at an array, they are fixed at an array of 90 degrees on a fixed stationary position, and they don't move. So I introduced um, a solar panel uh, Um, sorry for the delay. Proceeding. I introduced a solar panel tracking system which, aim, which aimed to help solar panels to harness double power. Um, and now, here is a video of me showing how my project works. No, that's, that's the second one. This first one is not picking up. I don't know what's happening with the other one. Okay, let's move to the other one. With this one please. Um, we seem to ha be having a problem with the laptop, so um, if you guys are interested in seeing how my project works, please kindly um, visit the exhibition area after the formal session. And now, this is a video of me presenting my project at the International Science Fair for 2017. I'm um, still waiting for the guy to connect for the sound and everything. Um, unfortunately, we can't play the video. Um, the audio is too loud. But still, if you guys are interested, kindly visit the exhibition area after the formal session. Opportunities from ESCOM Expo. Last year, I got um, the Siemens Buzzery, which was the grand award at the International Science Fair. I got a Buzzery to study in Germany and do mechatronical engineering, which was worth 1.5 million rands. I'll be flying to Berlin on Monday, the 30th of July.
Well, in science, at, at the International Science Fair, you get to meet celebrities. As you can see, I met Proverb, and I was glad I took a picture with him. And in, in my acknowledgments, I would like to thank ESCOM Expo for Young Scientists for the opportunity they've offered us, in particular the Island Zeni coordinators. I would also like to thank ESCOM as the grant sponsor, and without them, we will not have participated in the ESCOM Expo for Young Scientists. I would also like to thank Siemens for the buzzery because they are the reason why I became the first, I'm, I will become the first engineer at home and I'm going to study overseas. And I would also like to thank the Department of Science and Technology. And then the Department of Education in Pumalanga, more impo most importantly, the MST unit in Pumalanga, led by Mr. Nkosi for their kind support. And lastly, I would like to thank my family, in particular my mom, my aunt, my grandmother, for supporting me. And I would also like to thank my mentor, Bungumusa Koza. He's been mentoring me since back then. And And my teachers, in particular my school principal, Ms. N. N. Koza, for support. Thank you. <laughs> Lastly, I invite the public after the formal session to the exhibition area and to the regional expo on the 25th of August at John Lully Primary School in Bombela. And also, I invite you to the Regional Expo on the 18th of August at Bukhlabela. It's a sad part that I won't be there, but I hope you guys will enjoy and good luck. Thank you. project. So on the ESCOM booth, that's where I think you'll get to see the project that could not be beamed on the screen. But uh, another round of applause for Fiona. <laughs> because for the youngsters, you can hear things from us uh, uh, for many times, but if you hear from one of you who has been able to I use science and technology and who has been successful, probably the message is carried much, much better. So I'm now going to invite Professor Daniel Parker, uh, who is the head of the School of Biology and Environmental Sciences from the University to showcase uh, biodiversity conservation and development. Over to you, Prof. You can bring him on the podium with a round of applause. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Program Director, who also happens to be a Director General, so thank you very much for that. Honourable Minister, Deputy Minister, Acting Premier, distinguished guests from national and provincial government, Vice-Chancellor, Deputy Vice-Chancellor, academic leadership, my academic colleagues, most importantly, our young and aspiring scientists who are sitting in the audience this morning, Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. What I'm going to do in the next 10 minutes or so um, is I'm just going to talk very briefly about some of the work that we have begun here in our pioneering journey in our school, um, which is at the University of Mpumalanga, talking about biodiversity research, 
conservation and development. So I hope that all of you are probably thinking, well, what, what is biodiversity anyway? I hope you're thinking that, because that's certainly what, what I'm thinking all the time. Biodiversity is simply all the living organisms, plants and animals that we see around us. It's a very simple definition. But something else that I hope that you're thinking about is, well, who, who really cares about biodiversity and why should we care? I hope this is not gonna shout at me, this, this microphone, I might need to stand back. So this plans. There we go. So why should we care? Well, we've got to, we, we should care for a number of reasons. First of all, biodiversity is actually very important to our economy. As most of you know, our um, honorable president is very involved in biodiversity in the, in the economy. He grows animals like this um, on his very important farm, but we have a lot of other people who are doing similar things. So biodiversity is very important from an economic point of view. Biodiversity is also very important for people for a number of reasons, but one example is the reliance of people on biodiversity for food. Many of us will know that in many parts of South Africa, mapani worms are very, very important during the time of year that they erupt and start eating mapani leaves, a major source of protein in Limpopo and parts of Mpumalanga. It's also very important for the functioning of our ecosystems. So if we didn't have things like these dung beetles that are cruising around in the environment, we'd have buildups of all sorts of things that we might not really like to have in the environment. So they help our ecosystems function. And then another important reason why we should worry about biodiversity is it because biodiversity allows us as scientists, as researchers, to go out and try and understand what's happening when it comes to issues such as climate change and habitat change and transformation. Right, so what are we doing here at UNP? Well, what we've done with the strategic leadership of our university, coming together and inviting the scientists that are here at the university to put together some ideas, throw some ideas around it. Our vice chancellor opened it up for some, some applications and we submitted one a group of us, and we were very lucky to have it accepted by the university as a strategic direction. And so there's a, there's a bunch of people, you won't recognize them, they haven't been on Isidingo or, or anything like that, so you won't see them, it's not proverb, okay, up there. But there's a bunch of us that are getting together and we're starting to work on questions. We're starting to try and understand what's going on when it comes to research in the, in the field of biodiversity and we're slowly putting together some other ideas. We want to get units together so that we can start energizing ourselves and, and working together with others. And we work on animals as small as this little ant over here. I hope you can see it behind me. It's on the screens on the side as well. And all the way up to other animals as large as this one. My PhD student has just had a paper accepted working on these animals, um, big lions that come out of the Kruger Park and eat people's cattle sometimes. Now that's, that's important because these are some of the questions that we're trying to answer. I'm not going to, what we're starting to answer, I'm not going to read through them. But just think about it. Biodiversity is very important. We need to understand how we can harness biodiversity for building our bioeconomy. How do we figure out, marry the ideals of people and the conservation of biodiversity? If every one of us, I don't know who that person is on the, on the screen there, um, but if every one of us was to take animals from the environment all the time without thinking about where they come from and conserving them, they're not going to be around forever. So these are some of the questions that we're hoping to answer, some of the questions that we're starting to tackle, but we can't do it alone. And we have a, a large group and a growing group of people and 
universities and organizations that we're starting to work with, that we hope to continue to work with. I was very pleased to hear the minister a little while ago uh, talking about DST becoming involved in things like um, centers of excellence and research chairs. Those sorts of things would be lovely to put the Department of Science and Technology onto that page as well. Thank you very much for that, Minister. But folks, that's a very brief introduction to some of the kinds of work that we do when, we, when we're talking about biodiversity research. This is science. And I'd just like to end off with uh, a little photograph. That's another animal that I work on. And because we are in the province of the, the rising sun, I thought I'd put a picture of a, a jackal walking around on a farm trying to find its next meal as the sun rises. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, uh, Professor Parker. So we, we are almost at the end of the program. We would like now a minister to request the MD uh, Earth Observation from the South African National Space Agency, SANSA, Ms. Andiswa Mlisa, who will uh, hand over to the minister and the minister to hand over to the acting premier a uh, satellite imagery for decision making in Bumalanga. So uh, this year we are introducing in the program other technologies that we would like to promote which would help in decision making, but she knows more about it than I do, so let me hand over to her. Thank you, Program Director, Honorable Minister of Science and Technology, Deputy Minister, Acting Premier and MEC of Education, Vice Chancellor of the University of Mpumalanga, distinguished guests, learners, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Sani Bonan. As a South African Space Agency, we are here for two reasons. One, the Program Director has already given, but there's one that he didn't mention to you. We're actually here to ask you learners to come and become the engineers in the space agency. Did you even know we had a space agency? How many knew we had a space agency? I'm impressed. Congratulations. For those of you who don't know we have a space agency, we do have a space agent, South African Space Agency exhibition booth. If you can please visit it, they will tell you all about their career opportunities which move from you learning how the sun works and how the sun impacts our life here on Earth, how to, look, how to build satellites, how to build rockets, but most importantly, which is why I'm here, how do we actually take that information and we use it for decision making? Distinguished guests, when we talk about decision making, this moves from the questions that we ask ourselves to navigate our daily lives, it moves from to the questions we talk about for economic development, but most importantly for improvement of the quality of life for society, which talks to service delivery in the country. Understanding our past as well as understanding our future, our today, means that we can inform how our future should look like. Because we have the satellite image, we're collecting the satellite imagery for decades now as a, as a South African Space Agency, we have the capability to look back into the past and ask the question, how were things yesterday? How were things 10 years ago? How were things 30 years ago? And based on that, we can say, how is our world going to change going forward? Satellite imagery and what we call geospatial sciences enables us to answer very simple questions, such as, as where is the nearest clinic to my house? Where is the nearest school that I should be attending? And the most basic one of all that you might not know, what's the weather today? And when you ask your GPS, what are the directions to the place I want to go? These questions are informed by satellite. But we also go to much more complex questions. For example, a farmer might want to know 
What crops should I be planning where within my agricultural land? When should I be planning my crops? When should I be harvesting? But within your fields, they're huge, the fields. When do you know where to apply fertilizer? From the satellite imagery, we can tell the health status of a crop, which means you can be informed how much fertilizer you need to put on the ground and where do you need to put that fertilizer. It means we can use satellite imagery to plan our projects for service delivery, to monitor the progress of our projects, and to also evaluate whether we are actually making the progress we should be making within the given time that we had set up. We also can use this technology to conduct research, research that informs the state of the health of our environment, how we are managing and using our natural resources, and also how is the climate changing around us. We at the, National Science, at, the, at the South African National Space Agency, which is an entity of the Department of Science and Technology, are mandated to ensure that this technology reaches the hands of government and the hands of you as the public. The data package that we're gonna to provide today to the Office of the Premier does not only contain the satellite imagery, but it also contains the tools that enable you, you to use the satellite data. It also contains information on education for learners, but also for university students to inform the research. We know that grade 10, 11, and 12 has introduced your special information, GIS and remote sensing. There is curricular supporting information in this data disk for the teachers as well. Sansa Feather offers the Office of the Premier a capacity building program to ensure that the government of this province will, be, will have the capacity it requires to use this data set appropriately. Minister. Shall we request the active premier to come through? What they have done, okay, let me come here. What they have done is the image of Nell Sprayed through our entity, Sansa. So you'll see where the stadium the Bombella is, Stadium, Bombella Stadium the, the city, city center. center. This is through satellite that they've been able to capture. Hope you can hang it in the office and remember that we have this department as government. Uh, sometimes people think that we do not have very good uh, entities that are doing well. This is what we do as government. And I hope you heard me talk, ne? When you go to the stand, they ask them about what is the impact of space weather on flights that are missing? Ne? Did you know that question? When you go to the stand, remember you've heard about flights that are missing. Ask them, is that, how does it impact, get impacted by space? The explosions of the sun sometimes causes our flights to lose navigation. So this is some of the work that is being done. So that's why they can capture overall. So, acting premier. I'd like to move a little bit on the program before we assess whether we'll call the band again. So it is my pleasure to invite the Deputy General 
uh, Curriculum Pumalanga Department of Education to give a vote of thanks. A round of applause for her, please. Thank you, uh, Program Director, Honorable Minister, Honorable Deputy Minister, and the Honorable MEC, Professor Maikiso, and your team. All protocol observed. Sangwanani Abshieni, Lochani Nimadekwani, and Masiar, Nimasiare, and Eta. Sure. Um, mine is the most important task for today, Minister, because from here, it actually says we're going back to our schools, we're going back to our homes, and ensure that science is living. Make sure that we promote it, and make sure that we solve our problems. We're carrying everything that we have learned and had here today into our daily lives going forward. So I want to take this opportunity on behalf of the province to thank, firstly, the minister for bringing this important event to our province. Um, the province has an agenda to drive science and technology. It wouldn't have come at an opportune time. As this province we're seeing growth in our schools in terms of the number of learners that are choosing mathematics and science. In 2017, 48% of our grade 12 class wrote mathematics, and the number is growing each year. So indeed, this event would propel that agenda. Thank you so much. We want to thank you for bringing the event, but also providing the leadership to our country in this area of our life and area of our work. We want to thank all our political principals, the Deputy Minister. Thank you, Deputy Minister, for being here. It's really encouraging to see the two women leading science. It's very encouraging. and. Uh, as the speakers were coming here, I actually counted the women and I said, indeed, the agenda of women in science. <laughs> it's really bearing fruit. So thank you so much, uh, DM. And we want to thank also our Honorable MEC for Education, uh, who's today acting premier for this um, occasion. Thank you, MEC. I think you're living here very, very encouraged, <laughs> particularly after seeing Fiona here. <laughs> yeah, feeling very good that indeed there's something that is happening in education, but also happening in our country. Um, I can just imagine, Honorable Minister, that everybody that is here, particularly our learners, want to be like Fiona. They, 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 they want to go there and become scientists. The MEC sent a, a group of learners to Russia. All of them are in the science field. There are about two of them that are going into aerospace. They are science studying in that area. So we are encouraged. But we want to thank you, Honorable MEC, for grazing this occasion, but also for your inspiring words. That's why I said earlier on that we caring, you know, something going home. We actually are going to be different people when we get to our homes. Let me thank the University of Mpumalanga. Prof, thank you so much. You said uh, the university is five years old in October, but this university is doing great things. It's doing great things. So it's not a new university anymore. It's not a small university. So we are tracking 
and following the progress that the university is making. And it makes us very, very proud to be part of this university, but for this university to be in Umala. <laughs> so it makes us very proud. Thank you for hosting uh, this uh, important event together with your team. But we also want to appreciate all the other universities that have joined us for this launch. And thank also the different agencies of government. Um, it's a number of them from the science and technology, but we've seen others from other, other departments. So thank you so much, colleagues. Uh, together, we can make South Africa a better country. We want to thank our partners also in the non-governmental uh, organizations and institutions. A special word of appreciation goes to our partners and colleagues from other countries, Kenya, Botswana, Namibia, for really traveling the road to be here with us today, but to showcase what they are doing in their own countries. This day would not have been what it is today if we didn't have the exhibitors. It wouldn't have served its purpose. So thanks to all the colleagues that are exhibiting uh, outside. And as Fiona has invited all of us, we want to extend that invitation to all of us, emphasize let's not leave this place before we have gone to the exhibition. Because at least there we would start understanding what the intention and purpose of the Science Week is. I want to extend a special word of appreciation to our teachers. You know, being a teacher, Minister, I thought you were a teacher. <laughs> you know that the minister really had the learners in her hands. <laughs> and I, I thought definitely I must recruit the minister back into the classroom. <laughs> So I want to thank the teachers, they're really doing a good job. And thank you for really building and molding our children, teaching them and bringing them here today because the main purpose is to ensure that they become better people. Thank you, teachers. We thank the parents that have joined us also today. And the learners, thank you. Thank you so much for being here. I wish I could just have an attendance register, Minister, so that we can track these learners. You know, these learners attended the launch of the National Science Week in Bumalanga, and we track them over a 10-year period. What happens to them? Because definitely, definitely this is a life-changing experience, just being here. They are going to be better learners back in their schools. They now know and see what possibilities are there in terms of careers, but also in terms of life. So thank you so much for being here. So the attendance list saying you track until until this is speak. Those that are in metric, those that are in grade 11, I'll be tracking you. So make sure that if you have not applied to a higher education institution, you do that before Tuesday. Before Tuesday, you do that. This government of ours has already cleared, you know, all the hurdles in your path. You can become whatever you want. The condition at home, the area you're coming from, cannot limit you. We've seen Fiona here. She said Maosha is not on the map, but it's a girl from Maosha going to Germany. So it is possible. So there's no excuse for you. But thank you for being here. Let's go back and work very hard and really make our country proud, but also improve the life of our people. Let me also thank the choir and the band for entertaining us. Thank the organizing team. This was superb, well organized. Program director, we have the program. 
Thank you so much, Program uh, Director, but also thanks to everyone that has taken the opportunity to be here today. This is the launch of the Science Week. Ne? It's not the Science Week itself. This is the launch of the Science Week. So there is a lot of activities that will be happening from today for the coming seven days. But also there's a number of science opportunities, experiences that people can have after the seven days. So we want to extend the invitation to all of us. Let's use the Science Week really to promote science in our homes, promote science in our communities, promote science in our working environment. There are a number of activities that government has put on the table or on the agenda for next week. Let's ensure that we visit those. I know that there are activities that are happening in taxi ranks. There are activities that will be happening in bus stops. So let's visit those activities so that we can see the possibilities that science uh, brings. So for parents, encourage your children to take science and mathematics. When we do that, this country will become a better country. Thank you, one and all, for gracing this occasion today. But let's see each other in the week and also in days to come. Thank you so much, Program Director.